Hey guys, Tough Thumbs here. So I got a couple pimp jobs and a crazy pimp job. I don't know if you call it a pimp job or a reblade or a custom knife. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm actually uh, pretty happy about it. It's something I've always kind of wondered in my head if I could do it. And uh, so I had to do it because of my own stupid mistakes. But uh, yeah, you know. So uh, yeah, just sitting here. Text him with Alex Dees. He's telling me one of my pimp jobs is messed up, but he's an idiot, so I'm just kidding, Alex. But uh, as you can see here, I got a Spyderco Lum Chinese. Uh, this is one I pimped a little while back. There was a couple of them I do for this guy. He's a big fan of, uh, of the Lum Chinese. And uh, I did this one, and there was another one I could not do. Uh, it was busted when I got it. It was a little bit broken, so I couldn't do it. And it's to the point where I can't even put it back together. Um, not my fault, not his fault, just something, it's an old one. And uh, so, instead of trying it out, instead of paying for it, you know, I just decided to go with something interesting. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, I'm carrying my, my uh, Southern uh, since I got it, guys. It's awesome. Love it. See, it's nice and dirty. Uh, I'm using the hell out of it. It's still razor sharp. Very, very sharp. And uh, thank you for, for correcting me about 300 times on the steel. I just, you know, CTS 204. Yeah, so, you know, I don't, I don't really, it's a carpenter steel, apparently, so. Or, no, actually, it's similar to S30V, apparently. I don't know. Whatever. But, uh, first up, I got two karambits. Uh, these belong to a guy who uh, runs a website called uh, theultimateknife.com, so I'll put a link to that. You guys check it out. The guy is just madly obsessed with karambits, and uh, he's got a great philosophy about them. Uh, he's more of a lean towards more self-defense stuff, and uh, you know we talked a while about the Fox Karambit and the Emerson Karambit, and uh, I decided to, to get one of the the Fox Karambits from him after I got it and checked it out because I, I think it's really awesome actually. And it's a lot less money, you know, than the other ones, but so I show him up. I, I pimp both of these. Both of these need the pot clip switched to the other side, uh, and the holes tapped on the other side. So ignore the uh, pot clip placement. So used to doing them on this this side that I just kind of uh, forgot. So the cut pot clips look a little weird. That's because you know they shouldn't be over there. So these usually have just G10 on them. So you got the nice N690 blade, which I really like from Fox. The Emerson Wave patent, which works really good, uh, almost better than Emerson's. No offense to Emerson. And this one I got the uh, really shiny carbon fiber, thanks to uh, Pimpy Long Slappins. Good dude, he gave me another sheet of this stuff. I don't know where he gets it. Uh, see, it's nice and chunky. Uh, the dude wanted this to fill his hand out better, and it definitely does. Uh, you get a nice full grip on here. It's very, very comfortable. Contoured all around. You see the pot clips on the wrong side there. Um, really awesome knife. Really just razor sharp. Even got a little flipper on it. Yeah, it's uh, a little tight right now, but you get the idea. holding the blade shut there. So, uh, while I'm showing the next one, this next one's Toxic Green and Black, I'm gonna talk about USPS for a minute. Um, no offense to anybody who who works there or anything like that, I use USPS, um, but I'm second guessing like why the hell I use them, uh, because their policies on insurance are just kind of ridiculous, um, and I find it to be just like, it's just really stupid, I mean, their job is to basically deliver something uh, to somebody, and they have new policies in place that basically like makes it so if they lose something, it's it's stolen. There's nothing, nothing you can do about it. And uh, so pretty much insurance is absolutely useless, guys, unless you have a receipt from wherever you bought it from. Uh, say you buy a Spider Co, you have to have a receipt from Spider Co, or I don't even know if they even let you do something like if you bought it from Blade HQ. Like that's the only way they will honor their insurance. And uh, you know, I even asked them like, what if it's something like handcrafted, like say I made one of my toads and sent it to somebody and insured it for $400. You know, like what about if I made it, you know, and the, oh, it doesn't work that way, so what the hell does that mean? I, I don't even know what that means, but 
it's a little bit ridiculous. So, um, guys, I mean, I even talked to the dudes there. I mean, some of them are just think it's dumb too. Uh, but uh, he was just like, you know, you're better off not even insuring it because insuring it is a, you know, if you insure it for a lot, you got that blue blue tag on there. And uh, the people who do the sorting is where, where all the stealing goes on. Um, from what I've heard from employees there who know about this stuff. Um, when you put those tags on there and you insure it for a lot, it's pretty much like a, hey, look at me, I'm valuable, steal me. So, you know, I don't know, guys. I mean, just keep that in mind. I will insure for whatever you want still. But, uh, I mean, I was almost laughed at when I went to the new post office down here. Like, why the hell are you insuring this? And I'm like, well, you know, it's, you know, keep the customer satisfied. That's what they want. And he's like, okay. And I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. So it's almost a bad thing. But, I mean, like I said, I've delivered tons and tons and tons of things. Only three things have been lost or stolen. That was coming, two coming from somebody and one going back to somebody. And it's always been the fault of uh, one of the... Uh, sorting facility workers stealing something so just let you guys know that's what's going on with that and no offense to anybody who works at USPS I mean you know I'm still using them I just don't live near anything else so it's my only choice right now so anyway now onto this lum Chinese so basically he was like okay cool you know can if you could just send back the stuff and like maybe you could do a frame lock conversion for me and I was like okay and he's like and I'm like okay you have a serrated blade and he's like I don't like serration so I was like He's like, can you do a reblade? I'm like, uh, well, you're gonna wait a couple months because you know heat treat, treat takes two weeks and all that stuff. And and I was like, unless you want a titanium blade, and he's like, sure, do it. So basically, what I did was, I mean, all the parts from the lum were basically useless for the other one. So I rebuilt one from scratch. I made one. The only original part on the one I'm about to show you is the pocket clip, and even that's been modified. So everything was made completely by me, completely uh, here in the shop. Um, I'm not copying a design or anything. I'm literally, it's, it's a redo, I guess. I don't know if it's a gray area, but I'm not, I don't offer these guys. This was just a special one for a customer of mine that's a loyal customer, um, cause I messed up his knife. So basically I made a new one. So this is the original guys. Take note of like, you know, the hole, the grind, uh, the swedge on top. I'll keep this one in the background. So. You got your full titanium blade. It's basically a Spyderco Bob Lum Chinese. Completely, almost completely copied. There's some exaggerated features on here. Let's give it a special look to it. But it's real thin titanium. Uh, comes with a real razor sharp edge, not carbonized. For more for light use, a gentleman type of thing. You got the Coyote Tan and Brown scale with the nice pivot screw. And of course, the frame lock. Just two screw construction, completely flow through. Lock up is nice, easy to disengage. Perfectly centered. You basically have a, a complete custom Bob Lum Chinese Spyderco done by not by Spyderco so uh, I followed it the best I could um, it's pretty much the same uh, the blade it swoops down a little bit and it's got more belly to it uh, everything else is the same full flat ground Two stop pins in there, it's pretty funny. There's a double stop in, one for open, one for close. I messed that up, but it actually worked really well like that. So it's like reinforced. And it's almost exact. You see it's kind of more belly on it than this one. Just a little bit. But even the uh, cut there for the for uh, sharpening is there. See the Tough Knives logo? Kind of did a fade out, it's kind of like a brownish halfway down the blade, kind of bronzed it into the gray sandblast. Same with the frame lock side. Uh, this full tie on tie lock, it takes a little break in time. 
Uh, I basically set it so it locks up like almost 100% uh, to get it to be perfect. You know, there's no blade play whatsoever. Thing weighs nothing, like literally nothing. And you know, you can't put a D10 in there because uh, you know the titanium rub against the D10 ball would be just really bad. But it ain't opening. It's more of a uh, one hand, like just you know, you can you can quickly open it. You know, if you add a little wrist flick to it, but uh, it doesn't lock up perfectly like that. Basically, you open it normal. You know, there's no blade play, everything's nice. No side to side, no up and down. Phosphor bronze bushings in there, nice thick ones. So I basically made a spider co, guys. I mean, I've always wondered if I could make one. And uh, I followed it exactly. And I added some little flares here and there just to make it look nicer. Paul, man, I hope you're happy. I hope this makes up for my mess up. Um, I'm really happy and proud of it. I mean, it's just kind of cool to uh, do one of uh, Spider-Ghost designs completely from start to finish. It feels exactly the same as the real one. It's really comfy, you know, for... It's pretty sharp. I don't even know if I tried cut test with this. Ooh, I have different paper in front of me. I definitely can get it a lot sharper than it is right now because it is titanium. But yeah, right now it's not that sharp. I just kind of put the uh, edge on there for the video, just for the see the bevel. But uh, it is sharp. Just gotta get the angle right. But yeah, I gotta sharpen a little bit more. But incredibly easy to sharpen, but does not hold an edge very long. That's why there's more belly here uh, than the original. You know, because you got a lot more wear time and uh you know an extra like just a hair yeah you got extra on there so you got more wear time there so after like a couple of years of sharpening over and over and over maybe it'll start to look exactly like this blade but you know it's definitely cool it's a nice little edc because it's full titanium completely centering's perfect everything's perfect on it I really like this a lot. It's really cool. There's, it weighs nothing, guys. Like, this thing weighs nothing at all. Just super lightweight. You don't even notice it in your pocket at all. Paul, give me a call when you see this. If you do see it, uh, let me know what you think. Really interested to know what you think about it. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the complete redo. And uh, I saw a video about the carbon fiber thing with Spyderco with the carbon fiber laminate over top of G10. If you guys want me to do a video on it, I did. I did a video a while back. I think that's where some people found out about it. Like I just kind of was just in passing mentioned. Uh, you know, I see a lot of people saying stuff about spider co like you know they're like they're trying to cheat somebody but that's not the case guys i mean technically the carbon fiber is not you can see my destruction test is not really that much better than g10 i mean having a laminate over top you're basically having the uh basically the same strength with a little bit of layer of uh, carbon fiber on top which uh you know gives it the look but still has the strength and you know in some cases carbon fiber frays and g10 does i don't know but if you guys want me to do a video, I can show you. I got a Sage 1 scale I can cut into, and you guys can see that it actually is G10. And yeah, you can do comparisons or whatever. Let me know. But let me know what you think of the LUM redo here. Um, very happy with it, so. All right, guys, have a good one. Peace.